So this will be a quick talk on the antiparasitics. So what's important to remember here is that we are not covering all of the antiparasitics. This is not a pharmacology lecture. We're just primarily talking about the antiparasitics that are used in diseases that are common in the United States. So we're not going to be talking about treating leishmaniasis or malaria or, uh, or any of that. So these are the drugs we're going to address and as you can see a lot of these drugs are used for other things. So metronidazole is used uh, in, in the treatment of uh, bacterial infections. Uh, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole is used for the treatment of bacterial infections. So uh, it's really difficult to classify these as antiprotozoals or anti-amoebics and so forth, uh, but this is just classifying them as far as uh, what diseases we're talking about. So let's start with the protozoal diseases. So tinidazole is a drug, uh, actually the treatment of choice for refractory giardiasis. Now normally Giardiasis, and let's just recap what giardiasis is. Giardiasis is a malabsorptive diarrhea. It's due to, uh, it, it can be due to uh, anal oral uh, intercourse, sexual contact. Uh, most commonly, it's due to drinking stream water. You'll see it in campers, people who've been drinking uh, from mountain streams uh, because that's where this particular protozoa lives. So, um, Generally, we don't treat giardiasis because it's self-limited, but if the giardiasis is refractory, if it's in an older patient, if it's in a patient that's already uh, really ill, or if it's in an immunocompromised patient, then we do actually want to treat it. And so tinidazole will be the treatment of choice. Metronidazole is the treatment of choice in trichomoniasis. And remember what trichomoniasis is, is it's one of the three causes of vaginitis. And we differentiate trichomoniasis from bacterial vaginosis and from uh, uh, vaginal candidiasis based on what we see on both uh, speculum exam and on wet mount. So on the speculum exam with trichomoniasis, you're going to get more of a putrid odor, more of a, of a greenish uh, discharge, uh, whereas in bacterial vaginosis, it's more of a fishy odor. And uh, on wet mount, you'll certainly notice the, uh, the trichomonads uh, in the, uh, on microscopy. So metronidazole is the treatment of choice for trichomoniasis. Both of these drugs are chemically similar, and they cause a disulfiram-like reaction. And that's high-yield USMLE information. Disulfiram-like reaction, what that is, is it means if you take one of these drugs and you're drinking alcohol, then you're going to be really sick. Your blood pressure will go up and uh, you're going to be vomiting, uh, nausea, and so forth. So do not take metronidazole or tinidazole with alcohol. Okay, some of the amoebic disorders, we're going to talk about two of them that happen in HIV and AIDS patients. Uh, these are probably the most common of the amoebic disorders that are treated. So. Trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole is the treatment of choice in isosporiasis. And we actually didn't address this. It's, this one isn't tremendously common, but you can see it in HIV and AIDS patients, so I thought I would uh, address it here. Isosporiasis is a malabsorptive diarrhea. So if a patient comes in and they have malabsorptive diarrhea and they also happen to be uh, HIV AIDS positive, you definitely should have isosporiasis on your radar. Now, malabsorptive diarrhea is, uh, there's other more common causes like chronic pancreatitis or, uh, or let's say, uh, cystic fibrosis or um, Crohn's disease uh, or uh, uh, gluten allergy and so forth. But isosporiasis should be uh, on your radar and you should get a test for isosporiasis in any HIV AIDS patient that is presenting with malabsorptive diarrhea. The major adverse effect to trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, of course, because this is a sulfa drug, it's an anaphylaxis. So if the patient has isosporiasis and you are treating them, which you should, uh, and they also happen to be sulfa intolerant, then you can substitute it with pyrimethamine. 
Now, for toxoplasmosis, this is an encephalopathic disease in HIV and AIDS patients. This is slightly more common. And remember what toxoplasmosis is, is a dissemination of toxoplasma gondii, which is a, uh, another amoeba, to the brain, and it causes uh, mass-like symptoms, uh, headache, fever, and so forth. So for the treatment of toxoplasmosis, we use pyrimethamine and sulfadiazine jointly. And uh, again, this is another common disease in HIV and AIDS patients. So you should, uh, you should know that toxoplasmosis is something that should be on your radar in HIV and AIDS. And if you haven't watched the HIV and AIDS section, watch it because we cover this in much greater detail. Now what happens if the patient is allergic to sulfa drugs? Then we can replace uh, sulfadiazine with clindamycin. So uh, one major adverse effect from pyrimethamine, and it is rare, but uh, myelosuppression can happen. So we uh, supplement any patient who's on pyrimethamine with folate. Uh, now patients are on trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole as a, uh, as, as a um, prophylaxis for toxoplasmosis when they go below 200 uh, CD4 cells. So uh, that's a common reason why we don't see isosporiasis is because when patients are treated and they're, they're getting uh, their trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, that's going to prevent the isosporiasis from developing right there. So we talk about the, uh, when, when we uh, do the prophylaxis in the HIV and AIDS section. That's something really important to know. Okay, anti-helminthics. So there's not a lot of these that we talked about, primarily pinworm. And this, we have a variety of choices. Albendazole, mibendazole, and pyrantopamoate are all appropriate treatments. I would say probably that uh, mibendazole is the most commonly used, but don't quote me on that. Um, L-bendazole, I've heard, has been discontinued in the United States. At least the production has been discontinued. And mibendazole has very, very broad coverage. So with any helminth, with any worm, mibendazole is generally a, an appropriate therapy. L-bendazole has been linked rarely to a plastic anemia. So uh, that's important to keep in mind. Okay, so the ectoparasitics, and the ones we talked about are lice and scabies. And for this, we can use the same thing. So permethrin is a topical cream, and that's going to be the treatment of choice for both lice and for scabies. And as far as lice, that goes for head lice and pubic lice and so forth. As with any topical therapy, dermal irritation is the major adverse effect.